you have a bit of a think about is if you've never bought a caravan before, there's a lot of people at the moment because of COVID that have had to reassess what they do for holidays and where they go. And maybe now is the biggest and best time ever to be holidaying in Australia. With that in mind, we are getting heaps of people in who've never seen a caravan up close. They've said them pass them on the road, but that's about it. Now, one of the things I thought we would bring to your attention is a list of questions and probably details that if you're gonna go and look at a caravan, this will make things a lot easier for both yourself and if you have a partner who's ever with you, the dealer you're talking to, it'll help you with your research and it'll eliminate probably looking at things unnecessarily that might have never have suited you because once the criteria is put in place, it's probably a lot easier for the dealers and the people who have the vans on sale to shortlist a range of vans rather than have to take you through 50 caravans. So when we get people come in here to Hinterland Caravans, the staff and myself have a pretty standard format. The first thing we want to know is, what sort of holiday are you intending doing? Are you someone who's going to use it weekends? Two or three weeks, four weeks a year? Are you going to travel and live in the van? Is it your home? If it's your home, you're going to be probably taking everything you own or as much as you can get with you. And you'll probably consider a bigger van with more storage. If you're just someone who's doing weekends away and the odd couple of weeks in a run up at the local beach or in the local national park out west, maybe a 20 footer. But this comes back to what you're going to do with the van. So prior to coming to the dealers, make a checklist. And if you've got this list in your, in your mind or if you've alternatively written it down, it'll really help and allow the dealer to try to work to find something that you will honestly be able to use correctly. So let's go through a few things. What sort of holiday are you gonna do? We put things into four categories. Long term, living in the van, working around Australia, gonna be you know, resident in one spot, you're gonna have all your gear, your, your, your family might visit, you could have equipment, tools, hobbies, bicycles, canoes, whatever, your winter clothes, your summer clothes, all your cookware, all your essentials. You can't fit all that stuff, as a rule, comfortably, in a 20 foot caravan. So we normally find people who are gonna do extensive traveling, long term living, long term touring. There's people who tour for two, two years at a time. Now I wouldn't be able to do that. My wife and I would probably go away maybe three months at a time at the most, and then we'd be back for a few months. We'd see family, we'd see friends, we'd check our house, gardens, our dog, whatever, right? But there are people who travel all the time in their van. Now they will want a different layout. And if you're intending selling your home or your apartment or whatever, where you live, and moving in to live in a van, we've even got people who are giving up on renting, it's getting so dear, and looking at a caravan to live in. Make sure you let the dealer know that because he will guide you towards a van that's gonna have the right fit out, the right layout, the right storage. It'll have more uh, kitchen area. It might have bigger seating. If you're someone who's big into arts and crafts, it might have to have an additional area somewhere to put that sort of thing in. So you need to give the dealer feedback. What are you gonna do with the van? Let's go to the other point. Where do you wanna go? Now, if you're someone like myself, I love the coastal regions. For sure, I'll go out west, but not for long periods. And maybe long reach, I might do Broome, I might do the sort of uh, Flinders Ranges, but I'm not the sort of person that wants to be out west all the time. I'm not going to enjoy driving on, driving on corrugated roads. That's just not me. I don't really like the heat. I don't like the dust and whatever. But there is a massive market for people who love that. They want to really go bush. They want to do four-wheel driving. They want to do remote camping. They want to do prospecting. They're going to do the Gib River. They're going to do the, the Jinka track up north. They're going to cut through the top of WA. That sort of travelling, if that's what you're going to do, once again, you've got to let the person that's trying to help you buy a van know. You're going to need to look at a van with a certain level of suspension. Highly likely, heavy duty independent. You're probably going to need additional water tanks to allow you to stay in those remote areas longer. You may even need upgraded batteries or extra solar. Because you're free camping, you need to be completely independent. You're not going to be back on the grid. So once again, if that's what you want to do, tell the dealer. Think about it first. And if you buy something that can do a bit of both, great. Okay, you can get vans that are a bit of a crossover. But if you're someone who really wants to go west and you wanted to go gem prospecting and, and drive through the middle of Australia, it's no good getting a van on, which is a semi-off-roader with 15-inch wheels, 
uh, you know, a 100 amp battery and a, and a 120 litre water tank. That's not going to suffice. That's not going to work for you. Move on to the next point. Do you want to tow it with the vehicle you've got now? What is your vehicle? Once you know the sort of van you're looking at, once you know the size, if it's off-road, if it's on-road, that'll also bring into play the weight of the van. Now, you shouldn't be worried about weight unless you're underdone with your car. People must have a car that's capable, and capable to do it without busting its boiler. No one wants to be towing up here and revving the guts out of their car. It's not good for the car. It's heavy on fuel, and of course it's uncomfortable to be always working the car so hard. So for argument's sake, if you had an off-road van and it weighed 3,300 kilos loaded, might weigh uh, 2,500 kilos empty, you're going to need a car that tows three and a half tonne. And that's going to allow you to, to tow the van, have a little bit of space, you're not right in the crest, you're back down here, and do it safely with a load of, of personal equipment, water, food, clothes, shoes, fishing gear and whatever, that still doesn't break the maximum weight for the van. It's no good buying a van that weighs 3,300 kilos loaded if it's, if it's got the ability to do that. And you have a car that is right on the border of 3,300. I would say that's a, that's a pretty silly thing to do. And it's also gonna not help you with longevity of the, the van or the car because everything's been worked to the max. Um, if you're going to use a utility, that will also have a different sort of circumstance because you've got the ability to carry stuff in the back of the ute you might want to put a canopy on it, you might want some other bits and bobs. Once again, you might have uh, slides in the back, you could have a fridge, a pull-out thing, extra batteries, fishing gear, but you need to know the weight, and you need to probably know the combined weight. And that's what they call your gross combined towing mass, right? That's the maximum weight of a car loaded and a van loaded on the back. Those two things together. Some vehicles are a, a, a gross combined towing mass of, say, six tonne. So it doesn't matter whether, in that case, the van is three and a half tonne, the car can only be two and a half tonne. If the van's three tonne, the car can be three tonne. But once again, these are things you need to know. Do some homework. Suss out what you want to do, where you want to go, how much time you're going to spend in the van, and even down to things like, if you're someone who gets up early before your partner, or you're going to travel by yourself, uh, you're going to have a different layout. If you're travelling as a couple, my wife loves to sleep in. And I'm a bit of an early bird. I get up, check out the beach, go and get a paper, watch the news. Maybe you'd consider a van with some separation. There's vans in the range that all the dealers have where there's a, a bifold door or a, or a middle bathroom with a slider that sort of separates the bedroom from a living area. That's ideal. If you're a shift worker and you're going to live in the van and work, you'd want that so you can go to bed early and get up late without interfering with your partner. So there's all manner of questions to look at. As far as right or wrong there is no right or wrong it's a little bit like picking um, a, a meal at a menu at a restaurant everybody has their own taste everybody looks at things differently it really comes back to what's going to work for you but if you go in forewarned with all the details ready to go <coughs> well that's bugging us up sorry big sneeze there with all the details ready to go warren might be able to cut that cameron with all the details ready to go then what will happen is it'll be a lot easier for them to say, right, I think I know something that might work. Let's show you this. Let's show you that. We don't mind when you come here to Hinterland if you want to look at every van we've got. Now, there's 60 vans here, new and used. You are welcome to look at everything. We've got brochures. We've got plans. We've got things loaded into our computers. We've got all manner of things to show you. But it's a pretty heavy road to, to, to hoe if you don't have some criteria to work to because it, it will most certainly make the job easier. Same if you go to a caravan show. If you just go there without a plan, you are literally going to be wandering from stand to stand, van to van. Ahead of time, look at maybe what sort of manufacturers do what sort of vans. There are specific manufacturers that specialise in off-road vans. There's people that specialise in family vans. There's people that specialise in light vans. I mean, we're just looking at vans at the moment that are specially designed to be towed behind small cars that tow only 1,500 kilos. That'll be ideal for older couples, single women, weekenders with young couples, a male that might be involved with some sort of sport, he puts his bicycle on the roof and has a little van on the back. Once again, it's to refine the right hat to suit your head, what works for you. So when you come to a dealer or when you're going to the show or if you're considering caravanning, I would tell you to find out those questions in your own mind. What are we gonna do with it? 
Where do we want to go? How much time do we think we're going to spend in it? If you're not sure, think more time than less. It's easier. How much time are we going to spend in it? What our tow vehicle is? And the last one, which is also very important, when do you want to go? When do you want to be on the road? What time frame? Because it's no good going to somebody if the time frame is 14 months out and you need to leave in 12. They need to then reassess what they can offer you. We don't mind when you come here to Hinterland if you want to look at every van we've got. Now there's 60 vans here, new and used. You are welcome to look at everything. We've got brochures, we've got plans, we've got things loaded into our computers, we've got all manner of things to show you. But it's a pretty heavy road to, to, to hoe if you don't have some criteria to work to because it, it will most certainly make the job easier. Same if you go to a caravan show. If you just go there without a plan, you are literally going to be wandering from stand to stand, van to van. Ahead of time, look at maybe what sort of manufacturers do what sort of vans. There are specific manufacturers that specialise in off-road vans. There's people that specialise in family vans. There's people that specialise in light vans. I mean, we're just looking at vans at the moment that are specially designed to be towed behind small cars that tow only 1,500 kilos. That'll be ideal for older couples, single women, weekenders with young couples, a male that might be involved with some sort of sport who puts his bicycle on the roof and has a little van on the back. Once again, it's to refine the right hat to suit your head, what works for you. So when you come to a dealer or when you're going to the show or if you're considering caravanning, I would tell you to find out those questions in your own mind. What are we gonna do with it? Where do we wanna go? How much time do we think we're gonna spend it? If you're not sure, Think more time than less, it's easier. How much time are we going to spend in it? What our tow vehicle is? And the last one, which is also very important, when do you want to go? When do you want to be on the road? What time frame? Because it's no good going to somebody if the time frame is 14 months out and you need to leave in 12. They need to then reassess what they can offer you. So if you follow that guideline, produce that information and all good staff are happy to take that on board, talk with them, share things, let them give you some feedback and the search for a van will be so much easier than what it is if you just walk in and look around without any real plan. I would tell you that's one of the easiest things to do and it makes picking a caravan that much more joyful. Have a great day. Carl the Van Man from Hinterland. We'll see you next time.